Hey YouTube, my name is Heather and I love anti-MLM content here on YouTube. Today I am super excited for us to watch just about six minutes of a Beachbody team call where a 15 star diamond coach is telling us about the different types of coaches who fail in their Beachbody business and specific examples of failures. So I'm really excited to watch this with you and please let me know what you think down below. I know I'm talking to a lot of great leaders out there, and I know I'm talking to uh, some brand new coaches, and uh, I also know that many of you are, are kicking butt, and some of them might have even locked in a lead already this year, and that's awesome, because I have not, but I am going to... Elite just means that they're at least five star and above, and they have a certain amount of different kinds of leadership points. I find it super interesting. I'm thinking about maybe doing a video on it, but it is like a very technical subject, so it might be kind of boring for whoever watches the video. So I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about that yet. There'll be value in, in this call for all of you, but my message <coughs> is primarily tonight to those of you who are out there, fearful friends who are sitting there in fear, um, in action because you're... While she's telling us about the different kinds of coaches who fail, remember that it's a way of blaming the individual for them not making money. It's not because the structure is fraudulent and set up to have at least 80% of people on the bottom. It's because of a character flaw in each individual coach. So just remember that as she's talking. You're afraid of what others might think. You're afraid of failing. You're afraid of everything. Um, limited Linda. Those it's totally fair to be afraid of failing and to be afraid of what people think around you, especially if you did a little bit of research into network marketing and you see the different reviews on it and maybe you come across a YouTube video of someone in Beachbody who did their best but still did not make any money or was bullied by an upline or got sick from using the products. I think it's totally reasonable to fear, feel fearful when you're taking in all that information and and it's kind of invalidating the value of that information because instead of saying, oh yeah, people have negative experiences, they'll say, you're just being scared. You need to block out the haters, the haters, and you need to block out the negativity, even though this is all factual information. What do you think? Those are those, are those of us who are sitting there with limiting beliefs, who have already talked ourselves out of this, who don't believe we're capable of any of these things we truly want. Toxic Tina or blaming... So that's... We don't believe we're capable. So if we, if I fail in Beachbody, again, not because the system is rigged, it's because I don't have self-confidence in myself and I don't think I deserve to be successful. And so I need to do more personal development and it's because I'm not following the business activity tracker properly and I'm not doing what I need to succeed. Again, just blaming the victim. I hate the the trend of victim blaming in MLM, it is so sad because people who fail in these companies, it's not their fault. They're indoctrinated to think in a certain way and to take in information in the way that their company wants them to. And it's not their fault that they were stuck in these companies. It's the fault of the system and of the companies itself. Does that make sense? I know I'm rambling already. It's been like two seconds and I pause it like a hundred times. I just have a lot to say. Hey, Brenda. Those are the ones who are out there comparing, pulling others down, wishing they had a different upline, a different team, a different set of circumstances. I wish I had a strong leg. I wish I had a this or that or the other. And instead of just putting on your big girl panties and working anyways, you're stuck in this toxic blaming mode or stagnancy. So the toxic Tina blaming Brenda, it's not their fault. It's not the fault of the company that they're not making money. It's because they have a shitty upline and they're comparing themselves too much. And they like to say, oh, it doesn't matter what team you join is what you do with the resources that you're given. But I've seen Beachbody, top Beachbody coaches all over talk about how it's so important who you join and you need to find the right team with the women and men that you can mesh with and connect with. And if you don't do that, you could possibly not be successful. Something I haven't talked about in a long time on this channel is the thought of comparison and how, why are you comparing yourself to someone, your chapter two to someone's chapter 99? And it makes me think, why wouldn't lower level beach body coaches compare? You have people like Emily Favre or Emily Lemoyne who got up to really, really high ranks really, really quickly. And I think it's totally reasonable to say, well, 
I've been in the in the business for a year like Emily Lemoyne was when she hit elite which is five star diamond with a certain amount of points how come I'm not at elite yet how come I'm only at diamond because the coaches who climb the ring so fast are like spot they're always in the spotlight they're on all the national wake-up calls they talk at all the events at summit at super saturdays and i think when all you see are these people who found such massive success so quickly i feel like it's a normal rational thing to compare yourself and i also just think it's a normal rational thing as humans to compare yourself it's really hard not to i'm wondering if anyone has never, has ever, like, if anyone has gone through their whole life with never comparing themselves to someone else, I don't think that's true. And I don't think that makes someone toxic. I think it makes someone human. Susan, this is those of us who are what I call a reservoir of information, the ones who are constantly doing trainings, constantly watching um, other people, other coaches' stories and videos in the champions page and other teams' team calls, yet not doing their vital behaviors so you're stuck so that's who i'm really saying it susan in a lot of beach body calls they tell you you need to be on national wake-up call you need to be on your team call you need to go to this diamond push group this emerald push group you need to hear the fitzpatrick speak you need to go to that call too so they're told to go to all of these calls Deanna Mims even said she would go to like three or four a week and she was required to but then you go to these calls and you study like you're told to and then you said then they tell you oh that's why you're not successful is because you're in analysis paralysis and all you do is study but you don't actually implement but then it's like but you tell me to do these things you tell me to study other coaches and go to all these team calls and now you're telling me that's why I'm not successful I, that contradiction is crazy to me and I can only imagine what it's like to be on these teams and to try to decipher what these people actually want you to do. Talking to you right now. Because, and, and if this isn't you, I bet you will have or have someone on your team that you are in charge of mentoring and coaching and supporting that might fit this category. Or maybe this is you at one point um, and you can kind of self-reflect and grow. The reason why I want to talk to you is because you've already decided that you're not going to be successful. You've already decided somewhere that you've got a plan B, that you don't really need this. You've got one foot out the door. You made up that mind already. But you're still... Has anyone here watched Jessica Hickson a long time ago? I don't remember that how long ago, maybe a couple months. She did a video of a top It Works consultant saying that two people with the exact same story and the same circumstances one's going to be successful and the other one's not because one has a plan b and they're like oh well my husband works i still have my job i could just go back to full-time whatevering i don't actually need this but it would be nice to be able to stay home and work so i can be with my kids and so she's saying like you're not being successful because you don't actually need beach body to pay your bills and keep a roof over your heads because you have a plan B, you have one foot out the door. And Jessica Hickson made a really wonderful point that I also picked up on from the Lula Rich documentary when they, there's such an emphasis in Lula Row about retiring your husbands. So making so much money that your husband do not need to work anymore and you can just rely on the MLM income. And she was, Jessica Hickson was talking about how when she was in, it was used as a bragging point. Like, oh, I brought my husband home. He doesn't need to work anymore because of it works. And she was saying that she thinks it's because that way you have all your eggs in one basket and you can't just quit it works because you're not, it works or LuLaRoe because you're not, because you're not, you don't have any other in income coming into the household. And if you were to quit, then you don't have any money to feed your kids. And so you have all your eggs in the MLM basket. That's not something that I thought of before watching Lula Rich and Jessica Hickson. And I didn't realize that it could be like a, a way of making sure that people are totally reliant and dependent on the MLM. What do you think? still here because you're still going through the motions you said you'd be here in a year there's still part of you that wants this so i'm going to challenge you tonight to change your mind right back okay and we're going to go through how to do that but that's where my challenge to you is change your mind right back because you don't have to be this person i can tell you that fearful friend limited linda toxic tina blaming brendan and stagnant susan is never going to be rock star rosie or superstar sally or whoever 
you have to work through this before you can get through the, the other things that we're going to talk about tonight. But so if you're failing and not making money in Beachbody, it's because you're fearful or you're toxic or you have a limited mindset or you're in analysis paralysis and you just want to do all the training. It's not because you're trying your best and you're putting in all the time and effort, but you still can't make any money. I know not many people watch this channel, but if you happen to watch this and you've been in an MLM and you did exactly what your upline told you and you came in with the intent of making a significant amount of money and you put in all the effort and the time and you still didn't make money, I'd love to hear about your experiences down below because I think it's so sad and it's very gaslighty when people do what they're told to do and then they're told, oh, it's because you have a character flaw and you're not doing what you're supposed to when they're doing what they're told. What do you think? You have to commit and be willing to do that first. If you've already made up your mind, you're not going to be successful and you've got your fingers, you know, proverbially in your ears going, la, 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 you don't have anything relevant to say to me, then that's going to be the truth. So take them out of your ears, open your heart, and ask yourself, how is that working for you? Is being this way getting you happier, healthier, more successful? I guarantee it's not. Okay? So let's try something new. I want you to take, actually, I'm not going to show that side there. I want you to, to everyone to take just a hot deck in the chat and put what failures have you had in this business? Current past, somewhere in between, what have you failed at in this business? They're just writing what they failed at in the chat. So it's going to be silent and awkward for a second. You can put one thing, you can put five, whatever comes to mind is brain up. I love it. I love the honesty here. Go ahead and look at what other people are sharing too. Failing at inviting, you're failing at success club, you're failing at never getting to a leap, failing at taking action, dropping your rank. Look at this, you guys. So many people. Now, keep going, but ask yourself, how have you ever felt, how did you be and felt like you were alone like you're the only one who probably is struggling with her connection was really weird there. She said, have you ever felt like you've been alone in these failures? She's going to say, oh, well, I had these failures too, so it's okay. It doesn't matter if you had the same failures as me. I'm not making money. You are. It doesn't matter. This. And everyone around you is being successful, right? We suffer in silence, but every single one of us has felt these things. So I made this list a while back about failure in our world, right? You know, we go through life, it's many seasons of life before we ever get to Beach Party and, and expect that failure is going to come. We expect that we're going to struggle in school at times, we're, we're going to have hard days at jobs, it's going to be hard parenting sometimes. Like, we don't go and run and hide and give up when, when things are struggling in other aspects of our life, but somehow, somewhere, because of the personal aspect of owning our own business, when there's this failure piece, we let that become our identity sometimes. I think the difference is in day-to-day -day life, if we like fail in our job or we have a bad moment as a parent, we're not taught and indoctrinated to have a toxic positivity mindset. And majority of us know that it's healthy to feel negative feelings react to them, process them, and then during a reasonable time frame, move on. Nothing wrong with finding the positive in things, but in my opinion, I think there's something wrong with not allowing yourself to feel negative feelings. So we don't let failure stop us in day-to-day -day life because we allow ourselves to feel it. What do you think about that? And so I made this list, and, and a lot of what you guys just put in the chat is on this list you guys. But this isn't your list. This is my list. This was a list that I created when I sat down and said, what are all the things I failed at in this business? I've had unsupportive partners. I have had coaches cancel. I have missed success club. I was not a success starter. I couldn't get my family to drink and take this like my life for several years. 
in my opinion, I think she's trying to make herself seem more relatable. She's this big, fancy 15-star diamond coat. And look, she's had all these negative experiences too. I'm just going to read a few in case you can't see them. Not going as fast as she is. So comparing herself to top coaches, I'm gaining weight. And so how can I coach people? That's a very reasonable thing to, to feel. Having to rebuild, meaning a lot of your, co your team falls off and you drop your rank. What else? coach cancels and you drop your rank. Income drop because you dropped your rank. You miss success club so you're not making any money. Someone said Beachbody is a scam. I don't know about you, but if I was in a company and I was told that it's a scam company, that would bother me. My family doesn't support me. That would bother me too. And I would feel like it's a big red flag. Think, hmm, why doesn't my mom and my siblings and my dad support me in this? Hmm, maybe I should go do research. In my opinion, it would be a huge, huge red flag if my family did not support my job. Messages go MIA slash ghost. So if you're talking to someone on the internet and they seem interested in Beachbody and then they just completely ghost you. And I know in sales, it is a basic thing to like separate yourself from the results of your conversations and know that you're still a good salesperson, even if you don't sell anything. That's still really hard because a lot of people struggle with rejection. And that's a basic, very reasonable issue to have. What do you think? Oh, then I'm not making enough money. If you're not making enough money, you literally can't pay your bills. You can't feed your kids or yourself. So that's pretty significant. And it's interesting in Beachbody, you're not supposed to let any of these failures bother you. And you're supposed to keep going and stick it out because at some point, eventually down the road, you could be 15 star diamond too, and you could be making all this money. Um, I struggle with social media. I've had challenge groups for all of it. This is my list. But it didn't ever define me, and I never let it stop me or hold me hostage. So I think that's all I wanted to say. She never let it define her and hold her hostage, and we can make the decision to not let it define us too. So that's all I wanted to talk about today, and I wanted to talk about, in their opinion, the type of people who fail in Beachbody, and then what these failures actually are. In my opinion, these failures are all like really significant issues that can make it hard to do a good job in a good job and devote the time you need to in Beachbody. And if you're not making any money, it's going to be hard to stay, stay committed and continue doing your work, even if you're not making money, even if you're doing everything you're told to do. So I know that was a bit of a random video and I was extremely rambly, but I hope you enjoyed it and found some value. And please let me know what you think about it down below. I'll see you next time. Bye.